So here we are in the final video and the uh, the ultimate uh, theorem. So the, the result is that a real number is constructible if and only if it belongs to a field uh, which has degree two as an extension uh, over the rational numbers. Sorry, degree two to the power of n for some n. Um, now, you might be thinking, hey, wait a second, didn't I explain uh, in the last video how the, the constructible numbers uh, are an infinite field extension? What's this degree two stuff? Yes, the entirety of the construct constructible numbers is an infinite extension of the rationals. However, if you take any one particular uh, constructible number, this theorem is saying that it does belong to some extension of the rational number, some sort of in-between, uh, which has degree uh, a power of two, um, and, and conversely, every degree power of two extension of the rationals um, is constructible, uh, contains only constructible numbers. Uh, so let's just jump uh, right into it. Uh, so suppose we've already constructed some alpha one up to alpha n minus one, um, and let f be this this field where we've successively adjoined um, all of these these numbers alpha one up to alpha n minus one, and we want to construct some alpha n, right? Um, so so we're supposing alpha n is some constructible number, and we're going to think about the the field extension of just tossing in this one more constructible number. Um, well, let's think about this. What do we have for, for constructible numbers, right? What are the possibilities? Um, well, everything's ruler and compass, right? Or straight edge and compass. So, um, well, what can we do with straight edges? Well, we can have the intersection of two lines. Um, so that's one possibility. Or we could have a line intersecting a circle. We could get those coordinates. That's the other possibility. Or just two circles intersecting. So everything, all these crazy constructions and, and, and square roots and, you know, maybe like different polygons that we can construct, all of it really comes down to creating uh, coordinates, um, uh, points with certain coordinates that are simply the result of intersecting either lines with each other, lines with circles, or circles with circles. So in the first case, right, if we have these two lines, y equals m1x plus r1, uh, y equals m2x plus r2, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll leave the gritty details to yourself, but it, this is just basic linear algebra, right? This is just substitution of variables um, uh, to get what X and Y are. And look, we're, we're assuming that M1 and, and R1 are constructible numbers, right? We're, we're assuming that we can construct these lines. Um, and so all we're doing here is just using the field operations of, of that original field F. So in the case of intersecting two lines, actually nothing needs to be added, right? It's, it's a degree one extensions. We're not going to get anything that wasn't in the field before. Uh, so things get a little bit spicier if we think about the intersection of a line with a circle. So the general equation of a line is y equals uh, mx plus r. Um, of course, we have a, a, a special case for, for uh, perfectly vertical uh, lines, but that is a, a degenerate case I'll leave you to think about or, or to beg me to answer uh, in the comments below. Um, and then a general equation of a circle is going to be of the form x squared plus y squared plus ax plus by plus c equals zero, where again, um, if this is a constructible uh, a circle and con constructible line, all those coordinates are going to be in the base field. Um, so we simply substitute y into this equation of the circle, and then we rearrange and we obtain this uh, polynomial in terms of x that we see in the bottom line. Uh, well, the the whole, you know, uh, uh, completing the square works just the same in any field as it does with, say, the real numbers uh, or complex numbers. And so the quadratic formula still holds. Uh, so if you work through it, you'll find that the, the discriminant of this polynomial is this quantity d that you see here. Um, and again, what's the discriminant made out of? Well, we're just doing multiplications and additions and stuff like that. It's all the field operations. So d still belongs to the base field. Um, but then using the quadratic formula, we see that x is this combination, again, of just things that exist in the field. Um, and then we might have to, well, we do have to toss in the square root of d. Right, so that might not exist in the base field. Um, so that new coordinate 
um, is in f adjoin the square root of of d. Um, and then similarly, solving for y, we see now y is just a rational combination of x, and so that must also be in f adjoin the square root of d. Uh, finally, the last case is if we have the intersection of two circles. But uh, if you subtract the, uh, the, the second circle from the first circle and get that as our second equation, well, now look, what do we? our first equation is still just the equation of a circle. And now our second equation, uh, well, this is just an example of, an, of a linear equation. And so we can actually just use the result we proved that the intersection of a linear equation um, and a circle is, is at most a degree two extension um, uh, applied to these, right? We're, we're going to get our x and y, and, and we'll see it's, it's just going to be some uh, involving some square root. Um, okay, so so we've shown uh, basically that at actually, never mind just adding this this alpha n at each step of the process, if we construct some number, um, either that number was already in the field, like the intersection of two lines, or that number is uh, at most a degree two extension. So if we continuously apply this theorem we had from the previous video that says that um, extensions of fields, you know, successive extensions multiply to get together to give us the total extension, um, then this says that Q adjoin alpha one up to alpha n, right? This is really our F adjoin the alpha n um, over Q. Keep applying that again and again for each individual um, alpha and each jump when you're adding one more um, alpha in there, it's either going to be a degree one extension because that alpha belonged to the base field, or it's a degree two extension. So this product we get at the end here, uh, this is just a product of ones and twos. So it's going to be equal to some uh, power of two, uh, where, where two is less than or equal to the total number of alphas there. Okay, so certainly um, uh, constructing uh, numbers is definitely going to land us in a, in a degree two field. What about the other direction? Um, well, suppose that we had some degree two extension um, of some field where, again, we're assuming F is some collection of uh, some field of, of consisting of constructible numbers. Um, well, then by the result I was talking about with the polynomials, that means that alpha satisfies some degree two polynomial whose coefficients are in that uh, base field. But then, like I said, we can apply the quadratic formula uh, just as before. And again, we see what's involved here. It's just the field operations. Um, plus, we might have to toss in, uh, well, we do have to toss in a square root. It might already be in the field, or it's a degree two extension. Um, and that, that finishes off the theorem, right? That finishes off our, our result. A number is constructible if and only if it is in an extension uh, which is, uh, has degree some power of two. So finally, we get to apply this now to the uh, famous impossibility theorems. Uh, so for example, um, so I mean, some angles can be uh, uh, trisected, uh, definitely, right? I mean, uh, I didn't show this in this video, but you can construct the 60 degree angle, um, and certainly we can construct a 180 degree angle, and, and 60, uh, uh, you know, is a trisection of 180. However, you can't always trisect. There's no general method. For example, uh, pi over three cannot be trisected. Why? Um, well, first we're going to pass to the complex numbers. And now nothing that we've said has changed because, um, so we're gonna take all our, our constructible numbers. And then instead we're gonna look at complex numbers that have uh, constructible coordinates. Well, how do we get there? All we need to do is toss an I and we know that that's just going to be a degree two extension, right? Um, so we've still got this, this power of two um, theorem, successive powers of two theorem uh, going on. And now um, pi over, well, if we want to trisect pi over three, that's really the angle pi over nine, or uh, that's in radians, but talking about this in terms of degrees, that's 20 degrees. Um, but pi over nine, you know, if you think about your, your complex number arithmetic and, and we think about this, you know, the, the corresponding point on the unit circle that makes this uh, angle of pi over nine, that point, that complex number A has to satisfy the equation A to the power of nine equal to minus one, right? Um, and so, uh, well, if we look at that polynomial, right, we look at um, x, x to the 9 uh, plus 1, we factor that polynomial. 
And uh, so either this number A has to satisfy the first factor, which is um, X to the power of three plus one. Well, certainly no, right? If, if you take that uh, number on the complex unit circle, you'll find it doesn't satisfy that. So it must satisfy X to the six minus X to the three plus one. However, uh, if you do a little bit of work, you can convince yourself that this polynomial is irreducible. Uh, what does that mean? Well, uh, remember, there is this correspondence between the degree of the extension and the smallest polynomial um, having that thing you're adding as a root. So if this is irreducible, right, this has got to be the smallest degree of a, of a polynomial that has this value A as a root. And that means that the extension um, of, of Q adjoined this, this uh, A um, over the rational numbers is a degree six extension. So that six isn't a power of two, it's ruled out by our theorem. All right, moving on to the doubling of the cube. Suppose we have a cube of unit volume, right? So all of its sides are length one. And I want to construct some new cube whose uh, side length is R, whose volume is uh, twice the original, right? So, so just thinking about the, the arbitrary units we define, we want the volume of this new cube to be two. But we know the volume of a cube of side length r is r cubed. In other words, r has to be the cubed root of 2, uh, but this is a degree 3 extension. Um, and then finally, um, we cannot circle the square um, because, again, reducing simply to the, the unit case, um, this would mean to get uh, a, a square that has the same area as a circle, we would need to construct an edge of length square root pi, right? Square root pi to squared is pi. So what's the degree of Q adjoin the square root of pi over Q? Well, uh, using our formula, we can break that up as the degree of, of uh, Q uh, taken with the square root of pi, uh, or taking the square root of pi over Q adjoin uh, pi and Q adjoin pi over the, the rationals. Well, we know the, the, the first one is a degree two extension from uh, what we talked about before about uh, adding square roots. And then the other one, um, as we've also discussed, is an infinite degree extension. Um, so certainly uh, uh, does this is not um, a, a simple power of two extension. Um, and then finally, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's strictly necessary to use this field theory uh, business here, but definitely much more elegant. Uh, we have a famous theorem of Gauss. So this picture you see on the screen is a tiny, tiny fraction of the insane amount of work um, that goes into constructing a 17 gone. Uh, Gauss actually did this when he was 19 years old and was so proud of it that he had it put on his tombstone. Um, so that had been another question that laid open for a long time. Which regular polygons can you construct with a ruler and compass? Uh, well, it turns out 17 is certainly one of them. Um, but for example, seven is not. And it's completely characterized by this theorem, uh, which states that an n-gon is constructible if and only if it is equal to some power of two, which it could be two to the zero, um, or just any power of two here, times a product of prime numbers, where the prime numbers have to have a very particular form. They have to be of the form two to some power plus one. These are called Fermat primes. And so this completely characterizes um, uh, the constructability of n-gons. And that's it. That's, uh, you know, uh, a, a quick overview of, of the theory of geometric impossibilities and the beauty of modern day field theory, how it allows us to access you know, these problems that had people scratching their heads for thousands of years. Um, so uh, again, like I always say, questions, comments, concerns, uh, leave them below and I'll see you next time.